Hi there, this is part 2 of the Geometry Nodes tutorial. Last time we looked into the principles of Geometry Nodes and we created this distance function that you can see as vertex color on this grid. Today I want to do something useful with this distance function and the first idea that comes to my mind is to turn it into ripples. For that I want to use a cosine function. First let's press N over this Geometry Nodes viewport to turn off this side panel and give ourselves a little bit more room. And now let's create a new attribute math node. That one is for floating point math. There is another node called attribute vector math for vectors. Now let's connect this node before the attribute color ramp. Let's switch it to cosine. Cosine. We want to use the dist attribute as an input. Let's name the output cause by just clicking here and typing cause and then you get this little plus here and click there and you created a new output. The color ramp still displays the dist attribute. If we click here we can switch to cause and everything turns white because the cosine of zero turns out to be one and the input range is zero to one. So let's change the input range to give ripples. Let's create another math node attribute math and put it in front of the cosine and switch it to multiply. We want to use this dist attribute and we want to multiply it by a float. Say 30 for now. Let's output the results to dist scaled, dist scar. Click here to create the attribute. Now I have a scaled distance, but I'm using the old distance here. So let's switch this over to dist scar. And now you see I get ripples. The problem with that is that the cosine spits out values between minus one and one. And the attribute color ramp only accepts values between zero and one. So let's turn the range of this cos attribute to the range of zero to one. Although Blender comes with the utilities map range node that cannot be used on attributes. Instead it is used for single values. So for attributes at the moment we have to do it by hand. So let's create another attribute math node and let's first multiply the output range of the cosine function by 0.5. Switch b to be a float and make this 0.5. The attribute that we want to remap is cos and the result should be cos again. Now everything is just scaled and now we want to move it another 0.5 to move it in the right range. We can duplicate this node by selecting it and hitting shift D. We get another version of this and let's put it here and switch it to add. And now I'm moving the range that I scaled down another 0.5 units up and I end up in the range between zero and one. At the moment I have two relevant attributes on my geometry, cause, that is the ripples, and dist, that is a distance function. Now I want to use the distance function to attenuate the ripples because I want them to be strong, close to the end, and then decrease in intensity the further they get away. So I want to use the distance to attenuate the cause. Let's switch this back to cause. But the distance currently starts at zero, close to the end, and then goes up to one the further it gets away. We want the inverse of that. So let's create the reciprocal. Create a new attribute math node and connect it before the color ramp. Now switch A to be a float and set it to be one. Switch the operation to subtract and subtract dist from it. Let's call the result dist inf for inverted distance. And now let's look at dist inf and you see now we have a distance function that is strong close to the end and then gets weaker the further it gets away. Now we can use that to multiply the cause effect. But first we want to clamp it because the distance of course does not stop at one. So the inverted version goes into the negatives. So we want to clamp it and there is no clamp node yet for attributes. But we can use this color ramp for clamping because this color ramp automatically clamps the values between zero and one. Let's just duplicate this color ramp and use it as a clamp. Say dist inf and dist inverse. Not doing much but clamping the values. Nothing changes when I connect it. But now I can create a new attribute math node and put it here. So remember this attribute color ramp is just used for clamping and that one is used for outputting the data to the call layer. We can make sure that we remember what this node is for. If we quickly show the side panel again then go to item and then here under label put a little remark like clamp and that overrides the name of the node. So this is now called clamp. Press n again and now we can multiply the cause 
by the distance inverted and the result goes to cos. Now you see this nice fading that we got here because now we are using the distance function to attenuate the cosine. Until now we output the result of all our operations to color, but eventually we want to displace this grid. For displacement we need a vector. To create a vector let's create an attribute combine x, y, z. And as Blender features a z up coordinate system let's use the z value here and switch it over to attribute. Then put the entire node here before the last attribute color ramp. And now we want to have cos drive the z value of this vector. Let's call the vector disp for displacement. Now we have the vector but we are not using it yet. To use it let's create an attribute vector math and put it here. Use the current position of the points and add the displacement vector to it and write the result to position again and you see now we have displacement. The effect is a little strong at the moment so let's tune it down by using another math node, attribute math, that goes before turning everything into a vector and let's switch the second one here to float and the operation to multiply and let's use cos and multiply it by a value and then output it to cos again. Everything goes away because the value currently is zero, but now by sliding this slider you can control the height of the displacement. By the way, if you are pressing shift and then try to drag the slider you get more precision. Now that we have displacement we don't need this last attribute color ramp anymore, so get rid of it. And there's one thing left, because at the moment the effect reaches beyond the boundaries of this grid. We want to make it stop earlier. And we can do that if we multiply the distance function at the very beginning of the effect. So let's go all the way to the beginning. Here let's create a new math node, attribute math, and connect it here between the very first proximity node and the very first attribute math node. And let's use dist multiply it by a float and write it to dist again. Switch the operation to multiply. And now I have a control for how far the effect reaches, because this one is multiplying the distance. And remember, later the distance gets clamped, so if I have a value of 0.5 here and then I multiply it up, then it gets 1 and gets clamped and the effect ends here. So now we have a nice control how far the effect should go. Inside of geometry nodes you can promote values like in Houdini. Let's do that for this control. So if I just drag this input port here and then connect it to this hollow port on the group input, what I now get is a new port called B, exactly like this one, and on the modifier I now have a B control and I can dial the value from there. If you are not happy with the naming we can show the side panel and select this node, go to node, and here you have the ports, if you select B you can rename it, like reach. So this is our first value, reach, and then we can promote a second value, and this second value is just over there, this one here, that was the height of our displacement. So let's just take this one, this B value here, and connect it to the next hollow port, again it's called B, let's call it height, and now we promoted the relevant controls for our effect to the modifier and we can reach them here from the interface. So reach and height. If you like what we are doing please consider becoming a Patreon for supporting us and for access to more in-depth courses on topics like volume techniques or PDG or vellum and more. To everybody who is already supporting us, thank you so much. Without your continuous support, Entagma would not be possible.